The Economist said yesterday that China is going through its gravest test in more than 20 years. Why did they say this? Well, the reason is because experts are saying that China can't do what it usually does. It can't grow its way out of the current situation. Now, many are saying that China is actually facing its biggest test since the far reaching Deng Xiaoping reforms began in the 1990s. Last year, the country achieved growth of 5%, but the pillars of its decades long miracle are wobbling. Its famously industrious workforce is shrinking. History's wildest property boom has turned to bust with the largest property developer in the world uh, going bankrupt to the tune of more than 500 billion. And the global system of free trade that China used to get richer is disintegrating. As President Xi Jinping's response is to double down on an audacious plan to remake China's economy. Part of that is using robots, hundreds of millions of them, to essentially take over the global labor force. Blending techno-utopianism, central planning, and an obsession with security, uh, this sets out China's ambition to dominate the industries of tomorrow. But its contradictions mean it will disappoint China's people and possibly anger the rest of the world. Compared with 12 months ago, let alone the go-go years, the mood in China is sour. Although industrial production perked up in March, consumers are depressed, deflation lurks, and many entrepreneurs are disillusioned. Behind the angst lie deeper fears about China's vulnerabilities. Many millions of investors, everyday, everyday mum and dads who have purchased investment properties feel like those properties could potentially now be worthless. China is forecast to lose 20% of its workforce by 2050. A crisis in the property industry, which drives a fifth of Chinese GDP, will take many years to fix. It will hurt cash-strapped local governments that relied on land sales for revenues and flourishing real estate for growth. Relations with America are steadier. They have seemed to improve lately. As a phone call between Mr. Yi and President Joe Biden this week um, seemed to suggest that things have gotten better. But China has just taken America to a global court for arbitration. They claim the American government's uh, EV reforms are illegal. And as a result, friction has grown. Now the Chinese government is seeking to revive its economy before it uh, stagnates into recession. China has released its policy to change things. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to make lending much, much easier. China wants to stimulate the economy, to stimulate consumption. And how do they do that? Well, make more cars. Make more cars, send them all around the world, make more cars and sell more cars in China. Get rid of legacy automakers as much as you possibly can. Take over their production using local Chinese companies and begin to export those affordably priced EVs worldwide. The European Commission has said that every Chinese car company that sells a vehicle overseas gets a subsidiary directly from the Chinese government. In other words, they are subsidizing their growth internationally. Financial institutions though in China now can independently determine the maximum percentage of loans for conventionally powered vehicles and EVs for personal use based on the borrower's creditworthiness and repayment ability, according to an announcement jointly issued by the People's Republic Bank of China and the National Financial Regulatory Administration. So what does this mean? Well, China is trying to give out very, very cheap loans. The cheapest loans that we've ever seen in the history of the country. For commercial, conventionally powered vehicles, the maximum loan ratio is 70%. For EVs, the maximum ratio is 75%. However, that's actually changed. China is allowing personal cars for personal use to have a 0% down payment. That has never ever happened before. China has never allowed loans to basically what would be considered subprime borrowers. That's what they're saying now. They're saying we won't regulate car loans at all. 
someone can come along, doesn't matter who they are. They want to buy a car and they don't have any money to put down. Don't worry about it. Sell them a car. What's the worst that can go wrong? They're going to default on a car loan. It's not that big of a deal, right? Or is it? Well, that depends because 27 million cars are sold every year in China. So if that company is still around and they can absorb those potential losses, maybe it doesn't matter. But if that company is someone like Neo, who has many billions of dollars in debt, then it could be a trickier situation. Now, 0% down payment is really an economic stimulus measure. The Chinese government have admitted as much. And this could mean that China's auto industry will do incredibly well this year, or uh, the economy could continue to stagnate. Now, this new policy comes into place immediately. In fact, it came into place two days ago. And Tesla, well, they jumped on this straight away. Tesla were actually one of the first car companies in China to offer this to consumers. But not only did Tesla offer 0% down payment, they're also offering 0% interest for five years. 0%. Now, will that stimulate more buyers to buy more cars? I'd say it probably will. However, there's still some pretty serious concerns because what kind of buyers do you attract with these kinds of deals? 0% down payment, 0% interest. If you need that in order to purchase a new car, your financial situation is probably pretty shaky. This, in my opinion, is a little bit of a dangerous situation. We're seeing something play out in America. We've seen uh, loan defaults at their highest levels in more than 20 years. And inventory stock has risen to record numbers in America. Now, if this were to happen in China, which actually it has, in China there's also record numbers of inventory, then what would happen? What happens when eventually the chickens come home to roost? It may not look pretty. Thanks for watching.